board Antoinette and Mary Fisher 895 and we're going to have a look at the Victron Energy battery monitor here. Um, if you haven't seen these before, they're sort of like a fuel gauge for your batteries. Um, if you watched the last video, we had a little bit of a battery problem, um, which we sorted out. But these are always great if, um, if you're on the hook, if you like to stay away for a while, so you can get a really good idea of what um, is happening with your batteries. This is the BMV, where is it? BMV712. So yeah, there's a few different models of these, just um, got to watch out. This is the one with Bluetooth, and it can monitor two batteries, sort of. M monitors one with the full gauge, and it can monitor your second battery, usually your starter battery is just the voltage. If you find one that's 702, that means it doesn't have the Bluetooth functionality, and then there's a 700, which also that only can monitor one battery, it doesn't have the second battery monitoring capability. Um, so let's have a look, let's have a look, and put it up before we figure out how to get it in there. So they're fairly simple. There is a new version I saw when I was looking for this one. Very large manual, which um, you probably will need. Okay, so this is the, the monitor itself uh, with its protective coating. It does have a, a housing if you want to mount it like that. Uh, yeah, you un, unscrew the back here. And if you want to mount it on a housing in your dashboard, nice and straight. I don't know if I'll do that yet. Um, so obviously we'll have a better look at that when it's installed, but that's yeah the monitor there. This is the bit that does the work, so this is called the shunt. So you've got one side of this is the load, and one side is the power, is the battery only. So it's very particular how you wire these up, because anything you want to measure has to go through this shunt, and that actually gives you um, you know, your measurements and your analytics. Uh, the good thing is, and I have one of these on my last boat, is if you make a bit of a mistake, it's not the end of the world, you'll just get very odd readings and you can fix them up and um, get them going. It is a little bit tricky when you've got shore power or solar power, just which side everything goes, but it's not too bad to work out. Very long Cat5 cable, so this has to go right next to your batteries, they're bat battery terminals. Then you run this to wherever you want your monitor to be. I have heard people, um, they just keep this in the engine bay because it is Bluetooth, so you could just use the um, app on your phone and keep this in your bay if you don't want to run cable, or if you want to run cable up into your dashboard or, or wherever you want to put it. I haven't decided quite where this is going to go yet, but anyway. Uh, and then these are the two sensors. So one is to actually power the shunt, power the unit. It needs its own power supply. And this one goes to your second battery that you want to monitor. So as I said, usually the your starter battery. So this will monitor your house batteries to see how they go. And you keep your starter battery nice and fresh. But if you do something wrong, you can just keep an eye on your voltage on your starter batteries. You can do all sorts of smart things with this. Uh, on the app, you can set alarms. Um, so if your voltage on your second battery did start dropping for some reason, like you would not forgotten to turn it off, you could set an alarm that will um, alert you to that. You can set alarms for when you reach certain voltage or you, when you reach certain amp hour usage. Uh, so you can monitor all that. Especially good if you've got AMG batteries that you can't go past 50% drainage, otherwise you damage them. It's very handy for those. All right, let's get into the engine bay and figure out how to put it together. So we're just out in the lazarette of the uh, Mary Fisher 895, a pretty large workspace. I don't know if you can see in here because obviously we don't have a big inboard engine. Um, so there are our batteries down there. The other thing I forgot to mention in the, um, the last little bit was you do get a very good quick start guide. Um, so it's a nice little way to get everything used, you know, used to everything. Um, there is the, the big guide as well. So let's go have a look at these batteries. Alright, so I've just got to sort out where everything goes. This is my cranking battery. So that's the earth coming in. These are the two house batteries. 
Okay, so the, the earth is linked between those. So my shunt will go between the two earths there. I've got to figure out how um, we're going to fit everything in. Um, so we've got the shunt here. So that's what we got to put in. Um, this here is for the fab dock, but we'll talk about that another day. So let's have a look and I'll show you when we've got things ready to go. So we've got everything wired up as a test, uh, just to make sure it's all working before we hardwire everything in. So as we said, here's the um, negative coming in from the load, and this is our starter battery. Comes into this side, the load side, then connects to the shunt, or the, the battery side only. Battery, battery, and that's it. So um, this is the cable to power the actual shunt normal network connector to the output so it's all working well so at the moment I think I've got the fridge on so it's drawing 3.89 amps uh, we'll go through once it's all set up but yeah you can see yeah, the batteries have got 13.27 volts which is all good um, but yeah go through all this in a little bit so I'll just finish up the wiring the only thing I haven't done is wiring for the second battery. So another cable that looks exactly like this will go from the shunt into the positive terminal of the cranking battery which will give us a, a safety protection. Yeah, so that's it. I'll finish it all up and we'll have a look. Alright, just before I seal everything up I thought I might just do a quick sort of tour of where I've run everything. So there's the shunt in there and you can just see Here's the RJ45 wire, goes into there, through in here, that's the, um, hold on, that's the fuel tank in there, or one of the fuel tanks, so you can just see the wire there, and through there, and this is the only penetration I had to make, was that hole there, which I'll fill up later on. Then we get to run it all underneath it, so that comes out through a um, fitting there, so I'll wire it across the, across the, there, and there's another, you can see where it's going in the hole there, so I haven't had to do any cutouts, and that amazingly ends up in the pantry here, so hold on, I'll tilt down, and where is it, somewhere in there, that wire's coming out, oh, and coming out through there and then this is the back of the electricals board you can see my RJ45 and some light so what do you know there we go there's the RJ45 there with all the batteries turned off obviously so we can just put everything into place uh, let's do that and see what we've got okay well yeah. All right, we've finally got it in. So I put it inside where all the breakers are for the battery or the isolating switches for the batteries. So it's not a bad spot for it to be. So it is in there nice and snug now. Um, so let's have a quick run through why we do this. Um, just we won't go into what you can do on the we won't go into what you can do on the app. Let's just have a look at the uh, the interface for a second. So. You can see here, that's battery one, so that's your main house batteries, so 12.84 volts. That's your second battery, that's that second wire we ran to the cranking battery, so that's nice, 13 volts. We've just been, um, had the motors on, so everything's nice and charged. Now, that's the amps directly used right at this second, so if, uh, where's this, I can turn on a switch down here, a light switch, hold on. It's a little light switch, so not very much amperage, but you can use this to work out what is going on in your boat. So you can turn switches on and off and work out who is drawing the most current, uh, which device uh, maybe have a leakage on it, if it's drawing a lot of current, um, or which devices you should use you know, sparingly. So that's a direct amperage. How many amps are we pulling right now? Let's turn some lights on so we can see what it actually does.
Okay, so I just switched on some lights in the stereo, so it's bounced up to one and a half amps of power now. So obviously if we have that on, if we just ran that for an hour, we'd use 1.58 amp hours, which is what the next one is, oh, watts. So if you want to do your maths, you can work 12 volts times your amps. This is the one that you probably want to keep your eye on. It's minus 0.2 of an amp hour. So our batteries down here, uh, we've got 240 amp hours in total, but they're lead acid, so we don't really want to run them past 50%. So we don't really want to go and use more than 140 amp hours. So at the moment we're using 1.5 amps. So if we did an hour of that, it's 1.5 amp hours. Pretty simple. Now this is the one that I sort of use, and you can set up with the app. You can set it up in the using the setup, but it's easier with the app. You can program this to how much uh, battery capacity you've got. So I've programmed this to say I've got 240 amp hours of battery, and I want a floor of 50%. So it gives me a percentage of how much is left in the tank. So it's pretty much like a fuel gauge for your batteries. So very, very handy. And on our current usage, we have 145 hours <laughs> of use. So, you know, if you get the fridge and stuff running, that'll go down. But that jumps up and down depending on what you're doing. And, of course, when you turn the engines on or the generator on, you get the reverse. You can see the power actually going into the system, and it will count back your hours. So that's it. Thanks a lot for watching, and uh, if you've got any questions, uh, leave them in the comments below, and I'll try and get to them. Otherwise, I'll have a run through the app another day.